Okay, let him stand there. Sorry, sorry, Mr. Macheta. It's fine. I think it's going to be. Just, you can just stand up when they come. They are too full. Okay, you can sit there. Thank you.
Thanks, Miss Bester. Mr. Lamene? Yes, please support my lord. My lord, I, I confirm appearance on behalf of number one, being duly briefed by Mutong Atenis. Mutong Atenis. Yes, please support me. Okay. Only for accused number one? Only for number one. Thank you. <coughs> As it pleases the court, Mr. I Mr. am appearing. Is that Mr. Van Beek? <laughs> Is that Mr. Van Beek? Yes. It is accused number two. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fendler. May I please confirm your appearance on behalf of accused number three and six? Three and six. Three and six. Thanks, Mr. Maguri. As the court pleases, my lord, I appear for accused number four on a brief from Ryan Ishmael Atins. Thanks, Mr. Deba. You say accused number four? Number four, my lord. Thank you. As it pleases the court, my lord, Mohammed Sirat, I appear for accused number seven. I'm coming on record today. Accused number from seven. Accused number seven, your worship. Brief from Sally Attorneys. Thank you, Mr. Sirat. As the court pleases, my lord. As the court pleases, my lord, I'm Mr. Tebe from Tebe Atenis. I confirm that I'm on record for accused number eight. Accused number eight. eight. However, my lord, I apply that I be, uh, my mandate has come to an end. I apply that I be um, excused from this process. Uh, I formally withdraw. Are you withdrawing as attorney for yes, accused number eight? Yes, I understand eight. this. Accused number eight has procured another legal representative. You haven't filed a formal notice, isn't it? I, have, I did not file a formal notice, with my lord, hence my presence here today. Ms. Bester? I, I only received a formal notice of his withdrawal. Thanks, thanks, Ms. Uh, Bester. Do you have an excuse, Mr. Taylor? I'm indebted to the court, my lord. As a court, please. As a court, please, my lord, I confirm that I have received instructions to appear on behalf of accused number eight in this matter. You are also the instructing attorney. I'm also the instructing Mr. attorney, my lord, in respect of accused number one. Yes. As so, a court please. So lord. now you on record for accused number? Number eight, my lord. Thanks, Mr. McCoy. As a court please. Thank you. May it please the honorable court, my lord. I have been asked by Mr. Tusi, who could not be present today, to formally withdraw in respect of accused number nine. Accused number nine. As the court please smell it. Ms. Bester? May I please the court, my lord? My apologies. Okay. My lord, I'm this number five. Accused number nine. Who's nine? for accused number five. May I please the court, my lord? Number five applied for legal aid. Yes. So we, we are representing accused number five and then as well as accused number nine, my lord. Accused so five both and, and nine. number nine. They both applied for legal aid today, my lord, so we are granting legal aid. <coughs> as it pleases the court. Excuse me, Miss uh, Bester. You don't have problems with Mr. Deba's submission. Mr. Tuzi, I don't know what is his name, I just know Mr. Tuzi. Um, uh, he phoned me yesterday and he informed me that he is going to ask Mr. Deba to stand in for him uh, to withdraw on his, his behalf, um, my lord. But I just think we must get everything on, on record. Um, previously, um, for accused number seven, there were two lawyers involved, a uh, Mr. Uh, Jan Loebscher as well as a Mr. Matia. Both of them filed um, uh, 
notices regarding the withdrawal of them. And then uh, we also receive a withdrawal from Mr. Kunani. And Mr. Kunani was on behalf of accused. Now I can't remember. Mr. Kunani was on, on behalf of accused number eight, wasn't he? It was number five. Number five, sorry. Sorry, my day. Sorry. You, uh, so that is that. So this was supposed to be a pretrial. But as of the events that happen, um, my Lord, a pretrial is not going to happen today. So um, we've agreed upon us, um, and, and I also compiled a draft order. Um, regarding the rest of the proceedings that they must come and I, I just want to ask the register to provide the court with a copy of that you already have got that um, that we are going to postpone this matter my lord if it's in order with everyone up until the 5th of June for purposes of pre-trial and order to the 9th of uh, no, the 5th of June. That's the last paragraph, my Lord. That, that uh, is not uh, completed. I left it open so that the court can just confirm with all the lawyers if that date um, is suitable. You say the 29th of June? No, the 5th of June. The 5th of June. Uh, it's not on the draft order, isn't it? That, that only the date is left open. The last paragraph, my Lord. And postponed okay. to the 5th of June for what purpose? For pre-trial. For pre-trial. My Lord, paragraph 1 of the draft order is that the legal representatives must collect the copies of the dockets of, um, before on the 29th of um, March 2024 after this and the DPP will hand it the contents of the dockets to them as soon as we receive proof of payment but I can confirm that we already made the copies in that regard so they are available um, and that I undertake that if um, there are going to be any if I receive any new statements I will inform them accordingly and provide that to them but, my Lord, because of the issues, and uh, today is in fact a waste of time, um, I think it is important to establish already today, if the new lawyers and if the lawyers who are appearing today, are, um, if they receive any financial instructions in this regard, as it pleases the court. And then I will address it's you regarding... It's not contained in the draft order, in the draft order, that aspect that you've just raised that day? In respect of uh, financial instructions. I didn't add usual. that on. I think that um, I would rather prefer if you discreet, you handle that, my lord. My Lord, if the, if the 5th of June is in order, I would ask the court to um, postpone the matter up until the 5th of, of uh, June. Then my two of my learned colleagues are going to address you regarding the bail conditions um, where the accused must um, report at the certain police station. I don't have a problem with that, uh, my Lord. They must just <coughs> confirm that. And Unfortunately, my Lord, we need a formal order from the court um, on a court's letterhead before we can change it. But we agree that that will come into effect as from next week. So that gives the court time to prepare the court order. And it also will give the police the time to, to serve it and to notify all the, the different police stations. Um, let me see whether I understand you, Ms. Bester. You say that two of them are going to come with the variation of the bail conditions. Yeah. And uh, what about next week for the preparation of the court order? 
Yeah, in order for us to change that, it must be on a formal letterhead of, of the court before we can inform the police about that. So that must be a typed version on a, on a, on a, on a Could court. Could you order. enlighten me on the wording of the envisaged uh, variation of the condition? I think it's better for them, but they know exactly who they are, my lord, and I would like them to address you in that regard. I, I know it's accused number two. Accused number two. You can just maybe just stand up and address the court about that. Okay, we'll come to that point. Thanks, Mr. Man. And is that all, Miss Miss Miss? Uh, One more aspect, uh, my lord. Um, to morning, this morning I received um, information regarding accused number seven. Uh, Bester, that uh, he is taking chronic medication for uh, diabetics, but he refused to um, have his food this morning, and he also again ref uh, refused to take his breakfast that they brought from him um, from Grootvlei. I discussed that with his new lawyer, and I asked him to address that with his client, and maybe he can just confirm if he solved the problem with Mr. Bester in that regard. And I've got nothing more to say. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bester. Uh, <coughs> this is the court, my lord. Uh, in response to my learned colleague in regards to accused number seven, and him not wanting to have his meal this morning. The issue is not him wanting to have the meal, Your Worship. The issue herein is, if he does have that meal, my client is a diabetic, Your Worship, and the food that was provided to him will spike his sugar levels. They have not taken that into consideration. Uh, if they have, Your Worship, they will offer him food which would be consistent to giving someone who has diabetes. He has medication which he needs to <coughs> consume. Unfortunately, he cannot take the medication because he hasn't consumed any food thus far. He's informed them numerous times, but they refuse. I was in the cells myself. I've seen what type of food we, they... Are uh, what is happening today or are we talking Today, about Your Worship. This morning. <coughs> so, so what is actually sought to... Your Worship. Accused number seven cannot uh, literally consume any food this morning because the sugar levels and the carbohydrates are very rich in the, in the food that they're offering to give him. And uh, I was privy and witness to that. Uh, it's not conducive to give him the said food to someone who suffers from diabetes. Uh, that's the reason he refused to eat the meal, Your Worship. So what is the request? <coughs> my request is that uh, my client receive food conducive to a diabetic, Your Worship, uh, that is not high in sugar and that, that a, a diabetic can uh, tolerate, if I may say so, in, re in respect to the food. Your Worship, I would also like to bring to the court's attention uh, I further have instructions from my client that he has been refused or denied any phone calls to his legal representatives while he is in custody. and denied, access, denied a phone call as recent as yesterday, the day before his court date, as well, Your Worship. Yeah, my Lord. Your Worship, we humbly seek that a directive and order be given by this honorable court that he has access, free access to his legal representatives. If he needs to contact them, Your Worship, or contact us, he, he has that uh, available. Uh, 
uh, Your Worship, I, I believe it's, it's constitutional right to allow him a phone call or when his attorneys do call him or we, that he is allowed. Was this matter ever taken up with the relevant authorities? Uh, your Worship, it's, I've, I've just received instruction this morning. I see. As I've only got the, been <coughs> placed on record this morning, your, uh, okay. my Lord. There's also the aspect of clothes uh, where the, my client has been denied access to his own clothing. Clothes? To his own clothing, Your Worship, even for purposes of coming to this court. Uh, Excuse me, your, your, your client clothes, is, it in, is he an awaiting trial prisoner? Your Worship, indeed. Uh, accused number seven. Co coming to court, Your Worship, uh, he's been forced uh, by the authorities as per my instruction. Is it in respect of attending of uh, this court today, Your Worship? Or is it also in respect of the other days? Or uh, in respect of attending in respect court. Of <coughs> That's my instruction, Your Worship. In respect, my Lord. Your Worship, I did address the issue of the chronic medication. Uh, my Lord, I did address the issue of chronic medication, which he needs to take uh, after consuming a meal. Uh, is indeed, the, are you my saying Lord, is that all? Indeed, that is all for now. As the court pleases. Thanks, Mr. Seedit. Ms. Bester, on this aspect of Mr. Seedit? My Lord, I think regarding the food, I think the police can address that. Um, regarding the protocol of the phone calls, we can't interfere with their protocol. I know that it is strict and there are certain protocols that they must follow. So with all due respect, I don't think it would be advisable for the court to make an order. The reason why there is a protocol, because they can also phone other people and commit further crimes in the, in, in the prison. That is why there is some certain protocols regarding the phone calls. Um, regarding his clothes, it doesn't look like, like you have the, the orange, uh, uh, normally the orange overall on that they do wear, so I don't know what is the problem, but that is also not, not my concern at all. I've got nothing to do with that, and with, with all the respect, I also think that the court cannot order uh, correctional services uh, in that regard, because we don't know what, are they, what is the certain protocol in that regard. And that, that's that. But regarding the food, I think the police can see if they can assist him. I don't know. I, I have no idea what do diabetics eat, if it's bananas or oranges or anything like that. I have no idea. The, the question of the food, is it uh, for the day, for today that is? It's only for today. He's transported um, from the prison in Joburg and he's going to be transported immediately back after the adjournment. Thank you. <coughs> that takes care of Mr. S you want a replication, Mr. Seedert? <coughs> I beg your pardon, my lord. You'd like to replicate on that? <coughs> Indeed, uh, my lord. I believe the accused person has a right to legal representation. Uh, he has a right of access to his legal representation, Your Worship. That is standard protocol. When the accused is denied that right, my lord, it's an injustice. The accused, like all the other accused, your worship, or in, uh, my lord, in any other courts, or in any other matters, they have access to their own clothing, my lord. Uh, my client is being targeted in this matter, where he's directed to only wear what the officials at the prison, direct him to wear, my lord. Excuse me, I missed the last part. Where they direct, they only direct him to wear the clothes that they set out. Uh, that is my instruction, your worship, uh, my lord, as the court pleases. Thank you, Mr. Sivet. I made a mistake. It is correctional services who are responsible for his food because accused number seven is a sen sentence prisoner. So, he can't wear whatever he wants. And I don't understand the fact that he didn't have access to his lawyers. The way I understood it this morning, that this new legal team 
only received this morning instructions. Now, what, to what legal team didn't he have any then uh, that they deny him access? I, I, that is the way I was informed. Let's say that uh, you, your client is an awaiting trial mm -hmm. prisoner. I beg you. He's a sentence no. prisoner. Okay, are you aware of that, Mr. Prisoner? Excuse me, Mr. Seeded? Mr. Seeded? Because you brought what? me under the impression that he's awaiting trial. Uh, your, my Lord, he's awaiting uh, trial in respect of this matter, but he is a sentence prisoner. I see. Uh, okay. Indeed, Thanks. my Lord. Thanks, Mr. Seeded. Uh, uh, that is all, Ms. Bester. That's all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, my Lord. I uh, will attend to that matter just now, Mr. Sedat. Uh, in respect of the draft order and the 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 the, the, the and one of the aspects that were raised by Ms. Bester, I start with you, Mr. Tlami. Apologies, my lord. Yes. I mean, there was one aspect that was raised by my learned colleague in as far as the bail conditions are concerned. I do not know if the court would um, want me to address that now or later on. Can you give us space that we just... As the court pleases. Please. Just some, get some other in As, as we, the court pleases. If I miss that, you'll remind me, Mr. Mbappé. I'll, I'll do so, my lord. Okay. As the court pleases. Mr. Tlamini, I'll start with you. In respect of the one, the draft order, and also the aspect that was raised by... Uh, Ms. Bester, I think it will also touch on Mr. McClough now that uh, he is the instructing attorney here. That is in respect of uh, the financial instructions, as you usually call it, that are uh, you fully put in funds. The idea is, this is an aspect that was taken earlier on, and I thought that it will be contained in the way forward, in the draft order. Apparently it is not. But uh, for the sake of orderliness, that uh, there is no disruption in due course. So what is the position with uh, in respect of your client? Yes, uh, my lord, I, I'm not sure if it will but be. First, can you start with the draft order? You you have a copy of the draft, order. draft order. Do you confirm the contents of the draft order? I'm fully aware of the contents thereof. And, and the fifth also aspect is actually the one I think that I'm addressing now in respect of the uh, pecuniary. The, the fees, are your fees covered and that there is no disruption in due course, that there is a possible withdrawal that you are not put in funds? My Lord, as, as, as much as, as a council, I have been briefed. Um, but so I, I, say that it also I, I, I have some concerns with regard to that aspect. Particularly, my Lord, because we have not reached a stage wherein we can be able to say out of all the list of witnesses that we have been provided, we're looking at approximately the, the duration of the trial which may exist for how long? Because that is very important in order to determine whether or not it will be feasible and practically possible for an attorney to say, I have enough funds to cover for the duration of the trial. So my, my, my point, my Lord, is that how about in the draft order? I, I assume so, man. I assume so. But my to my way of thinking, I would suggest that since we're still coming back here on the on the on the fifth, can this matter not be ventilated on that particular day? When the state will then be able to say, my lord, I have so many witnesses, and out of all these witnesses. It is expected that the trial might run for so long because right now we don't know whether the trial will run for three weeks or four weeks or a month or two months. So it will be my, my plea and my request, my Lord, that this matter be held over <coughs> until the next appearance when we do the pre-trial and then it will be determined on that particular day, if it pleases you, Master. Thanks, Mr. Otherwise, the last Mr. aspect, my lord, regarding the date of the next remand being the 5th of June, uh, I'm comfortable with that, my lord. It date suits me. As a date for the pre trial? 5th of June. As a date for the pre trial? The 5th of June. Yes, my lord, it's the 5th.
particular meeting, Mr. McClellan? Do you confirm my what, your, what I, your counselor said? I, I do confirm, my lord. And you I, confirm the draft order? I do confirm the draft order, my lord. And the date of postponement? Indeed so, my lord. That is in order, my lord. I must indicate, my lord, um, furthermore, just to touch on what my learned colleague uh, has said under my brief, that take the opportunity to also address those issues on behalf of accused number eight that indeed um, that issue of, 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 of being properly placed in funds has not arisen, particularly in respect of the fact that taking into account that uh, there are still preliminary issues underway, until those are resolved, we shall be in a position... So you say that we are still in early stages? It's still early stages, my lord. It's still early stages, uh, particularly because we, we would... That would actually be tantamount to putting the cart before the horse. We might not know how long the trial will last. Anything we are, at the moment, we confirm that at the moment we are um, um, <coughs> duly instructed in respect of accused number one and as well as accused number eight. So That's how far we can take it. an aspect that could be revisited, revisited on the date of the pre-trial. The, the matter will be revisited on that particular because day. Because by Lord. that time you'll have had the dockets and so on. Indeed so, my Lord. Okay. Indeed so, my Lord. I confirm. That will be all. That will be it. My Thanks, Lord. Mr. As a court, please, my Lord. Yeah. But I received... Definitely you are, Ms. Bester. I know. And I <laughs> apologize for that. Okay. But I think that is going to be um, helpful to the court. Um, I look at the, at, the, at the 212Bs that we did receive. And I can't see that we could do it in less than 24 weeks because mainly everything is in dispute. So that, that they can take into consideration uh, for their planning. Uh, I think uh, the long and short of the submissions that we've had thus far is that the, that aspect that you raised may be a bit premature in the sense that the overall picture is not yet... Help yeah. them with the overall picture with the information that I received. 24 weeks at least. 24 weeks at yeah. least. So, do you do I understand you to be subtly saying that you confirm that this matter should be revisited at a later stage? Well, what what we can can do it on the later stage, but Good. on that stage, they can they when they do their planning now, they must realize that with that that I received at the moment, I can't see that we can do it in less than 24 weeks. Thank you for that, Thank Ms. Bester. Although I was out of order. Thank you. Thank you, my lord. Well, it seems as if it came in good stead. Thank you. <laughs> so what I'll do is that what I'm saying that is that to save time, I'm not going to raise that aspect because Thank it was an aspect yeah. that was to be in the top. Thanks, Ms. Bester. Mr. Deber, <clears throat> I think you... Excuse me, who's uh, in, in next is... Uh, Mr. Van... Gentlemen, let me put it this way to save time. All of you are in possession of the draft order. Uh, all the four points that are raised in the draft order and the postponement date of the 5th of June 2024, do you confirm you agreeable with that? Let's start here, Mr. Deva, and then we go on. I confirm same a lot. Thanks, Mr. Malamedes. Excuse me, Mr. Cedar. I do confirm the date as it pleases the court, my lord. Thank you, my lord. We confirm, sir, my lord. Thank you. Confirmed, my lord. Scott, please. Thank you, my lord. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Right. Then, uh, as far as the draft order is concerned, I'm going to make it an order. But there's still the still the aspect, Mr. Sidat, I'll be with you. Mr. Moburi, you wanted to raise the question mm -hmm. of the bail it's conditions. So my lord, my lord, remember that this court granted the accused bail and, and specifically accused number six, and this application is on behalf of accused number six, Mr. Diego Mahoza, my lord. And it's an application to vary the bail conditions, to, to vary the bail conditions, my lord, in as far as the police station to which he reports is concerned. My lord would remember that in terms of the judgment, and particularly paragraph 3.2 thereof, the appellants, as they then were, 
it, it reads, the appellants shall report to the Kahisalon police station on Mondays between the hours of 600 hours, 600 and in the morning and 1800 in the afternoon. The only variation that we seek, my Lord, and pray that this court grants, is that instead of the Kahisanum police station, it be the Mangawum police station. It is a, the police station that is closest and most convenient for accused number six, my Lord. I have discussed it with my learned colleague for the state, we, and um, she indicated <coughs> that she has no qualms there. Variation of that, uh, of, of paragraph what? It's paragraph 3.2. And you say that the reporting should be to the Mangaung police station. And not and not the Kahisan police station. The, the terms of reporting remain they, the same. They can remain the same. So the, the only amendment you seek is actually the police station. The police station. That is the only amendment that is sought. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Mugur. Mr. Court, please, Mr. Thank you. Ms. Bester. I agree. I don't have any problem with that. Now, what is it that you wanted that uh, it should be prepared before next week that it should be in order? <laughs> because I it's only the variation. Nothing. I can say absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ms. Bester. Then, Mr. Mruri, your application is granted. The, the police station will be amended to read that the accused should report to the Mangaum police station instead of the Kakisan police station. That's the court pleases, my lord, and I'm indebted to the court. Thank you. Then uh, the, yes, the only aspect that is oh. remaining is actually about yours, Mr. C, that is, isn't it? Indeed, so, my lord. Yes, uh, and it is the, sorry. Actually, the, 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 there are three aspects that you raised, the food, the phone calls, and the clothes. Uh, <coughs> You understand your position that you have just at this morning received instructions. Indeed, my lord. I only received instructions this yes. morning. And uh, we are going to be postponing the matter in a, sh in a short while. I think uh, would I suggest that you have an in-depth or during your consultations without being prescriptive, that you take these matters with your client because as far as the aspect of the food is concerned, uh, the food that he is going to receive now is he going to receive the food from the point of view of the SAP, S, or will it be from the correctional services uh, point of view? My Lord, I'm, I'm not entirely sure because the uh, gentleman who offered my client food this morning was not sure where that food had come from either, whether it's from the correctional services or the SAPS, police services. Okay. I think in this respect that I think take it up with the police and Ms. Bester, of course, I'm sure you'll be of assistance here in respect of that. Thanks. Okay. And uh, secondly, the aspect of the phone calls. I think that is a serious matter that is actually of fundamental and of a constitutional nature. It and I th think it. instead of treating it slapdash, that you should really take the instructions because it seems as if this is going to be a long trial if I listen to the state that there may be 24 weeks and so forth. Indeed so. That you really take it up because then it may mean that you may come up with a substantive application. That it is not just something that is being said without actually having a, a, a crucial information in that respect. Absolutely. So uh, I would... Uh, Indeed, we'll do, we'll do so, my yeah. And the question, the aspect of the clothes can be taken now because yeah, it's just transitional. Absolutely. Would you be happy with that, Mr. Seder? Indeed. 
Thank you. I think, uh, thank you, Mr. Senator. I think we've covered all the issues, uh, Ms. Bester. Then, um, on that note, then this matter is then postponed for the pre-trial to be Accused held. one is in custody, my lord. Accused one is in custody. Is in custody. Tell me, uh, <clears throat> is it accused one? Nandipa Mahodumani. Is she the only one who is in custody? She's in custody. Accused number seven. Double Excuse Bester me. Is, in is it accused number one? Which accused are in custody, Ms. Bester? Accused one. Yes. Yeah. Accused seven and accused nine. Uh, uh, accused eight. The rest are on bail. They are on bail. The same conditions are applicable. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bester. <coughs> Now the matter is then, as I said earlier, is postponed to the pre-trial date of 5 June 2024. The status quo remains in respect of accused 1, 7 and 8. They'll remain in custody and the status quo will remain the same in respect of the remaining accused and their bail is extended. My Lord, my learned colleague, inform me that she's ready to proceed. May I be excused? Unfortunately, I'm going to adjourn, Ms. Bester. Correct. Because we're having a number of pre-trials. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very much. We adjourn. <laughs>